In this video, we're gonna talk about aromatic hydrocarbons, what they are and how to name them. Aromatic hydrocarbons are also called aromatic compounds. Many aromatics are actually known by their common name. So these are some that you're gonna probably just have to memorize. Every aromatic hydrocarbon contains benzene as part of the structure. Benzene is a cyclic hydrocarbon. So it's essentially, it's a cycloalkane, but it's actually cycloalkene because it has double bonds in it. So benzene is C6H6. Aromatic hydrocarbons are also called arenes. And like I said, the most important aromatic hydrocarbon is benzene. It forms a ring structure similar to cyclohexane, but there are double bonds between the carbons. This is what benzene looks like. Or if you want to do just the line structure, you can actually draw a hexagon. And a lot of times people will draw circles inside of it. And that's because this is resonance. These double bonds could be moved to the single bonds locations. So these six-membered rings have both localized and delocalized electrons. So all of the sigma bonds are localized. They have to stay there. But all the pi bonds, the pi electrons, can actually move around. So this pi ring is much more stable than just a pi bond. And so aromatic hydrocarbons are actually much less reactive than alkenes and alkynes. So looking at the structure of benzene, these are three different ways you could draw it. So you could actually draw the hexagon with the double bonds uh, being shown, or you can do the condensed structure, or you could do the line structure and you simply draw a circle inside the hexagon. This represents uh, resonance and delocalized electrons. So naming aromatic compounds is very similar to naming alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. You're always going to name the substituents before the aromatic compound. So if you had something that looked like this, okay, this, the longest chain is your aromatic. That's benzene. So you'll name this, you'll just say methylbenzene. Now there's no need to say one methylbenzene because whenever, remember, whenever you number a ring, you always start with number one on one of the substituents. Now methylbenzene is also known as toluene. So every time you see methylbenzene, that's also known as toluene. Ethylbenzene is going to be the same way. You have a benzene ring, you have ethyl right off of it. So when a benzene ring is a substituent on a larger parent chain, then your benzene ring is actually named as a substituent. And this is called a phenyl group, which is actually on um, the page of all of your substituents in your packet. And it just says C6H6. That's this phenyl group. So phenyl is simply a benzene ring, but it's a substituent. So for example, here, notice that your parent chain is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight carbons. So because this is eight carbons, your parent chain is actually octane. But then we have to name it and name this phenyl group as a substituent. So it would be one, two, phenyl, octane. So when it comes to the structure of aromatic compounds, there are different ways that the aromatic compounds can be drawn. And the different ways that your substituents are off of the benzene ring actually has a part in how it's named. So if you take a look at this, we have essentially dinitrobenzene. NO2 is a nitro group. Notice all of these are dinitrobenzene, but the nitro substituents are simply organized differently. So if you have two substituents on a benzene ring, they can have three possible relationships. They could be like the picture on the left. This is ortho. Ortho means they're on adjacent carbons. So instead of saying one, two, dinitrobenzene, we just say ortho, dinitrobenzene. And it's then assumed that they're on adjacent carbons. Remember, it doesn't actually matter where you put them because this benzene ring can rotate and then it could look, you know, like various positions of the substituents, but it's just the same thing. Then we could have 1,3-dinitrobenzene, and that is meta. So if it's meta-dinitrobenzene, that has one carbon in between. That would be like the 1,3 positions. Or finally, we could have para-dinitrobenzene. Para means they're on opposite sides of the ring. So this would be like 1,4-dinitrobenzene. 
So you just need to know how these prefixes work with um, the locations of the substituents on the benzene ring. So for example, if we have 1,2-dimethylbenzene, that's also ortho-dimethylbenzene. Or sometimes you'll see it as O, you know, they don't want to put the R-T-H-O, so they'll put O-dimethylbenzene. That's also ortho-xylene. Okay, so there are a lot of different possible names. Um, I would highly recommend taking a look at um, section 24.3 in your book. That's where you have um, your aromatic hydrocarbons. Just in your notes, you have a lot of information as well. But remember that ortho means the substituents are next to each other. Then if we have something that looks like this, okay, remember we have, just try to number at first. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is benzene. Okay, so we're going to end it with benzene. It's one, three, dimethyl benzene. Well, one, three means there's one carbon between, which means it's meta dimethyl benzene or meta xylene. And then finally, we have one, two, three, four. We have one, four dimethyl benzene, which is the same as para dimethyl benzene or p dimethyl benzene or p xylene or para xylene.